here at Lake Grove Presbyterian Church, we recognize the complexity of this season and are inviting all of us to reflect on our experience of this complicated and uncertain time. Hello, Lillian. So good to see you this morning. Glad to be with you. As we uh, move into this episode of Caring Conversations, goodness, you have brought something to us um, in this unique time that I think we can really relate to. I'd love for you to just dive right in. What have you brought for us today? Yeah, well, so t this morning I am realizing, so we are um, mid-June. And um, for many of us, uh, if we have kids, then they've had graduations or um, the end of the year has either already happened or is happening. My kids are getting out of school tomorrow. So I still have a half a day <laughs> left of kids in school and then it will be summer. And so the 2021 school year, 2020, 2021 school year is coming to an end or has come to an end. And so first I just wanted to acknowledge how goodness, how strange of a year it was for all of us um, and especially for parents and students. And so I think I first off just wanna say congratulations to all of you. Whether you kind of felt like you're army crawling throughout the year or you're racing through the, the finish line, we've all made it through. Um, and so I just wanna recognize that that the year is complete, the school year, the academic year is complete. And it was a tough one. Um, it was difficult, but we are here and we made it. And so I just want to mm -hmm. recognize that. And then I, as I wanted to um, also just kind of share what's been going on in my heart now that summer is just around the corner, um, I'm hearing a mix of two different things. Either it's a sigh of relief on certain times mixed with some dejection because we as parents are deciding whether or not to send our kids to summer camps or to daycare centers. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we all know this is our second go around. We did this last summer, but um, now there are lessening of restrictions. And so even though there's a lessening of, it, of restrictions, we're still, there's still kind of an air of, um, do I need to be cautious? Um, or what do I need to be cautious about? Yeah. We've talked about in previous conversations about our thresholds. And so mm -hmm. relating to those thresholds now with the school year ending, um, I thought it could be good to talk about Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And um, in light of how are we approaching this summer? Um, yeah. I know that I'm finding myself reverting to old habits and it's, uh, there's two old habits. One of them is, oh goodness, summer is around the corner. Now I need to like start planning an endless amount of activities or play dates or planning road trips and camping. So that's one end. And then there's other days where I just feel like I just need to relinquish all of semblance of mm -hmm. a schedule. And I, it's, I just need to quit because all of it just feels too overwhelming. So there's that, there's those two, the polar um, yes, opposites. Two extremes. Yes. Yeah, those, those two extremes. And so recognizing that I thought, you know, again, I want to bring up the word and the word is Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, and I want to invite all of us to consider what, what is Sabbath and um, how does that relate to us today? Um, mm -hmm. There's a great you know, book that, oh yeah, go ahead, please. Oh, don't, well, I just wanted to say, my goodness, you're so, that word, I'm glad you're, you're bringing it up, but it's not one that we use. Like, I, I can't think of the time that I have that in my regular conversation. So I, I think you're about to share with us, but what does it mean to yeah. you? you know, and what does yeah. it mean? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. It's a word that we don't um, use often. And it's interesting to me because Sabbath, remembering the Sabbath or keeping the Sabbath is, is actually part of the Ten Commandments. And, you know, we know the commandments. We know what it means to do not commit murder, um, do not commit, <laughs> you know, we know yes. what it means not to um, have idols, or at least, you know, we, we use that language. But when it comes to remembering the Sabbath, we think... First off, it's easy to not consider it part of the commandments. 
Right. Or, um, you know, Lillian, a common thing, I think just because it's like, remember the Sabbath, we might think go to church. Um, yes. So just want to say, cause I bet a lot of people are thinking that's what Sabbath is. That's Sunday, right? Go to church. Right. So is it right. that I need to remember to go to church? <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, <laughs> like, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> There's so much, um, we don't understand when it comes to Sabbath. So I just want to read from Exodus, which is the portion of the yeah. 10 commandments. And it's, so it says, remember the Sabbath day. Oh, wait, let me backtrack. It's Exodus 20 in case anyone wants to go and, and look it up. Verse eight. So it says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord, your God. Um, and so because of that, right, we think, oh, yeah, Sabbath is Sunday. Um, but that's not the case. And I'm just going to read on a little bit more. Yes. It says, in six days, the Lord made heaven and the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Um, again, we want to, I, I want to be clear and let everyone know that Sabbath does not necessarily mean um, Sunday or going to church. But Sabbath actually means cease, so ceasing to work. Um, when we think about the commandment to remember the Sabbath, it's joined with because God rested. And it's not that um, God was tired after all of creation, like all of the work of creation, and he was feeling burnt out. And then, goodness, now I need to rest and take a Sabbath. Um, that's, not, that's not what's behind there. What it is is that because um, God created and the creation was good and it was complete, then he rested. Mm -hmm. So it's acknowledging that God created all things complete. Yeah. Um, wow. Complete. Sorry, I'm just, I'm loving that connection that you're making. Yeah. And in this season where we just completed something. Go ahead. Right. And um, so I want to share this book and, you know, there's, there are many different resources and this is just one that I came across. It's called Sabbath Keeping by Lynn mm -hmm. Babb. And in her first, in the very first chapter, she says this, um, our culture invariably supposes that action and accomplishment are better than rest. The yeah. doing something anything is better than doing nothing. And she yeah. writes this um, as a mother um, of children and um, when her children were younger. And she says, why is it scary to think about stopping or slowing down? Why do we need to justify our existence by constant motion? Why would we think we aren't allowed to rest? And um, goodness, so I'm kind of dovetailing several things. This is the end of a school year. Um, and so we are, it's complete, the year is complete. Also, as we are starting to re-enter in um, activities, we may be looking back and thinking, this past year is complete, it's done. Um, and I know that early on with the locked down and the shutdown or whatever word we want to use, um, we, we were thinking, well, you know, how can we rest through this time? And um, I don't know about you, but I think there was a short, that rest was short lived and then over functioning, over producing, we just committed to filling our schedules in different ways. Yes. And um, so I really thought that Lynn Babb's quote, was significant because it resonated with me. Why would we think we aren't allowed to rest? And yeah. in a culture where we put so much emphasis and importance on action and accomplishment. Right. You know, that's really such a good word for us. And I was just thinking as you were talking about that, you know, this season, and I can imagine the thought going through people's minds. What? Rest? I've been at home. Are you kidding me? I'm ready to get out to do all these things. But reality is, you know, if we, as you mentioned, if the rest was very short lived and then we went into over functioning, we also went into hyper vigilance. Yeah. And I don't think letting ourselves rest or let down, right? It's always kind of ready for what's the next thing. How do I need yeah. to be alert? Yeah. Um, yeah. 
And mm-hmm. so as a spiritual practice, I think Sabbath keeping can be so significant for us. And what I mean by that is we're not resting for the sake of resting. We rest knowing that God is the one who created all things complete. And so it's remembering like that focus, because I think having the right focus is important. Um, (laughs) Sabbath is a gift, and that gift is to cease our activity, um, to notice God at work in every minute of our lives. Um, And I think the reason why it's such a gift is because when we get busy, it re- busyness eclipses our ability to notice, to our ability to notice God. Yeah. So, um, you know, there, there's this other quote from the book where she says, God is the one in charge of keeping the world turning, not me. Mm. <laughs> and so t- that spiritual practice of taking Sabbath rest is really um, doing that is recognizing that God isn't the one in charge, not me, Mm -hmm. and just keeping that in focus. So here's um, a couple, a few tips, you know, how do you, how do you keep Sabbath? Um, First and foremost, it's always begin with prayer, ask God for guidance for the correct motivation. Um, You know, is it, we're asking, Lord, please motivate us to be obedient to your command to remember the Sabbath. And then um, if you've never practiced Sabbath keeping, I love this tip that she gives in the book, which is choose one thing to cease. And that one thing could be anything from multitasking or technology. <laughs> um, and then she even talk, says, well, you could choose to cease from negative self-talk or competitions or mm-hmm. housework or shopping, choose one thing to cease on a given day and practice that for three to six months. Mm. Then evaluate the impact that it, that's had. So just you know, choose the one thing. It doesn't have to be a full day, a full 24 hour day, because if you're just starting off that it's like you're floundering then. But, yes, that's um, overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So that those are just some tips on how to begin Sabbath keeping. Um, and mm-hmm. if you have already practiced Sabbath keeping, you know that it's not easy. It's quite difficult to fall into a rhythm where you can dedicate a 24 hour period to, to the Lord. And you're doing this out of obedience, but also out of joy in, in um, building your relationship with God during that day. But um, if you Mm. are seasoned in Sabbath keeping, I just want to encourage you to continue to persevere with that practice, especially this time of year. Um, Yes. And I really hear your invitation to everyone. You can rest. It is good and you need it. It's okay, Al. Yeah, exactly. That it is okay. And um, And even as you say that, I just, I feel like, is it okay? Like I I pause and I question, but um, so I just want to um, share Jesus's invitation to us Mm because you, all of you who are listening, you know, Pastor Susan and I, and I, you know, we're just people, but we'll hear the words of our Lord. (laughs) His invitation says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And so that is the invitation from our Lord Jesus Mm -hmm. to experience his goodness um, and his, his heart for each of us in resting with him, resting in obedience with him. Thank you. And it will be beautiful and good for our souls. Lillian, thanks for bringing this refreshing word for us today. And all of you listening, the Lord bless you. We will see see you and be with you next time.